What's up, you guys? It's VDX. This last weekend, Red Bull hosted a special showcase for Tekken 8. And this was especially exciting because not only did we get to see a build very close to the release build, we got to see pro players get their hands on the game. That means we get to see the dumbest, most broken stuff that each character is capable of doing. This one is a treat because not only do we get to see some early gameplay of Elisa, a character who was not featured in any of the open or closed betas, but we get to see the world's Elisa specialist showcase this character. If you don't know Cuddlecore already, she's a very successful woman in the Tekken scene. Her accolades speak for themselves. I'll let you look her up if you haven't already. What I'm here to talk about is how she pilots Elisa and why it feels like Elisa was built for her. So, some initial analysis. We're going to look at Elisa versus Lee in Tekken 8. And I can sum this up in a very brief statement. We know nothing. We have no idea how to counter every character's options. We have no idea what is the most stable way to play this game. All we have is what shows up on screen in front of us today. So I cannot draw any conclusions for you on Elisa versus Lee. I'm sorry. However, I can tell you about Cuddlecore's play style, and I can tell you what makes her built for Elisa, or vice versa, what makes Elisa built for her. Let's check this out. So, Cuddlecore, line by line. The first thing about this player is she is very well trained in her string defense and reactions. And this is true of most pro players, but it becomes very evident whenever you watch her play just how prepared she is. This will show up in this set, even though it's a new game, new strings, new situations, you will see her counter a lot of things with really solid defense. Another thing that's kind of a trademark in one way and kind of, it's weird to call this a trademark because it's such a well-balanced skill set. I say she has very balanced poking and movement. She doesn't lean heavily towards defensive movement like I do, for example, and she doesn't lean towards rushdown gameplay uh, in any capacity. It is balanced. She's equally doing both and finding appropriate times to play both styles. One thing she does do a lot, though, is she loves using Elisa's full crouch mix-up. Elisa has a strong low, some fast mid pokes, and uh, some slower mids that can give her higher reward if you'd end up ducking to beat the low. One thing that is a trademark Cuddlecore skill, though, is I would call her a momentum specialist. She loves using the power crush to either push her leads when you try to retaliate or halt the steamroll if you are running her over. She also is really good at using Elisa's standing four to counter delayed timings. Elisa has really good movement, so she'll sidestep to force you to delay your attack and realign. And if you delay and swing, she will counter you with her magic four. She is very effective at using all of these things and is very difficult to beat in tournament. And I think without further ado, it's time to show how effectively she does that in the new game. Up now, Super Kuma vs. Cardo Core. See, this is the first exhibition that we have for Tekken 8 here. So this is the very first exhibition of the day as the commentator show, and Super Kuma's playing Lee, who was his main in Tekken Tag 2. Now, uh, you can already see that Cuddlecore is using these quick pokes, running it back just to the start. She opens with a back one, right here, and then off the small whiff, she does a small full crouch down four. The down four three is another huge tool she uses to counter delay timings. I should have put that with the magic four. If you're sidestepping in order to beat Elisa's moves, down four three is a great way to counter sidestep duck. Because if you just sidestep block, you can beat it. But the sidestep and the duck exposes you to that homing mid. Slides and stances coming out of Cuddlecore. And again, this is the preparedness I was talking about. Look at this move. Lee hits the back four on block and goes into Hitman stance. Okay? In response, he does... Cuddlecore does a sidestep right. Okay? Do you see that right here? Well, sidestep right, but there's the chance that this move that comes out will be a high. So she inputs a duck after the sidestep. Sidestep right duck. Solid coverage movement and is ready for the whiff, reacting with the while standing too. And this is coming off of the first 30 seconds of a match. If you've never sat down at a tournament setup, it's sometimes really hard to get locked in in the first round. Cuddlecore is instantly locked in and ready with her defense. A lot of slides coming out of Super Akuma, and that was a really, really good block. Super Akuma whiffed this slide, or got this slide blocked, but was already ready for the next read. He did whiff the slide, actually. So rather than realizing his whiff late and being like, oh my god, I whiffed, what do I do next? He whiffed the slide and was already prepared for Cuddle to go low. So he's instantly ducking, blocks the slide, and gets a punish to kill. A little sigh of relief out of Super Akuma, but you'll see that Cuddle is not very shook here. Instant power crush. Remember that momentum? Super Akuma spent the whole last round sliding, 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 and then countering the whiff slide by expecting a duck in the future. So Cuddle opens the round, the next round, 
okay, with this power crush. Instant power crush, stopping his momentum, forward dashes, and blocks. Let's see that one more time. This is really cool. Right? You would think, oh, she has the momentum now. Maybe she'll push the lead. No, she forward dashes and does nothing in case Lee swings with a counter hit. Once she sees that he's doing nothing, she starts her poking offense again. Super Kuma's poking back. She's stepping right. Small pokes again. Counter hit, slide hits. Now she gets a combo. There's a big balance here between the quick pokes, some bigger counter hit moves, some coverage moves, and good defense. What an option here. I've never seen that. So she's sent flying, and she stands up. Immediately she does Elisa's backflip. I don't know the input for this, but it kicks Lee after the slide whiffs. Elbow out of the boot stance, and now she chills out. Not forcing anything into Lee's game plan. Lee's game plan is to find counter hits, so don't let, give it to him for free. Just chill. So after this elbow, she just chills out. And as expected, Super Akuma goes for the back four. What is unexpected is he swings anyways after whiffing, catching Cuddlecore out of the air. No combo, unfortunately. And a big whiff punish from Cuddlecore. That's a like new game unfamiliarity from Super Akuma. Pretty hard to understand how all these combos work, especially when there are new moves. And uh, Lee's combo extender there is clearly a brand new move. Look at this. Look at this situation from Cuddlecore. While standing 4 from Lee, and he has an extension while standing 4-4, four, four, Heat Engager. Cuddlecore ducks a Flash Duck. Did she lab Lee in advance? Or, like, as in in this event, because they give him the chance to lab? Or is she just familiar with, like, uh, Mishima's, for example, with a... Actually, that's not even a good analogy. It would have to be Jin from Tekken 8, because Jin has while standing 4-4 four, four now. Or she would have understood that she was going to fight Super Akuma and labbed Lee in advance at this event. Either way, incredible preparedness. Doesn't get a launch quite yet, but goes for the heat engager. Using the new chainsaw stance. Another flash duck that is gets a whiff. Down jab, and then a flash duck. You see, she stands up and then ducks. Small punish, though. She's still in heat state. Oh, the homing move catches her stepping this time. How will she counter the next situation? Just backdashing. This was really, really good spacing. She understands again that Lee loves back four into Hitman as a default option at range. So she dashes in and stops right about here and makes it whiff. Recognizing the whiff, but she recognizes there's a whiff, but she's not fast enough to get a whiff punish. So instead, she goes for a mix up with the slide. Super Kuma instantly goes into heat and look at that whiff punish. Absolutely textbook. Plus frames, backdash, whiff punish on the forward forward three. Whiffed on the down jab, but this time she wasn't expecting to whiff again. And then Lee has a low heat smash. And that is a significant amount of damage for a low. That's pretty nasty. Back flipping again. Power crush attempt. Raw chainsaw stance, but gets hit out of it. Tries to backflip again. <gasps> Amazing awareness. Look at this. Knocked down. One hit will kill. It makes so much sense to go for a low because the spring kick in this game doesn't kill anymore. But Elisa has her unique fly out of lying down, and it one-shots Super Akuma. She takes a breath. Super Akuma's laughing. That was incredible. She tries the sidestep, but doesn't duck this time. Throw out of crouch. She whiffs two strings in the open, and there she's caught onto the slides and does a small punish. There's another power crush attempt here. So after this punish, she goes into chainsaw, throws her string, and just makes a call out on Super Akuma trying to retaliate here because she is at frame disadvantage, so he should have his turn. She just goes for the power crush and then starts pushing her offense again. Power crush again! Not letting Super Akuma get anything started, even though she's... Like, this option is very, very, very aggressive. Because, for example, the first is the first power crush. This is good because it challenges the frame disadvantage, right? She goes low here. She actually has advantage here and has room to attack, right? However, she doesn't know, say for example, she goes for a high just to push her lead. Super Akuma could duck and punish. If she goes for a low and blocks, Super Akuma could duck and punish. She could go for a mid, but if the mid is too slow, Super Akuma can counter hit, no, again, because Lee has the magic four. We don't know for sure whether it's available or not because we don't know the frames of this game yet. But recognizing all of those options, the best coverage is this power crush. It'll beat his mids, he can't duck it, and no low he does will probably, come out fast enough to counter hit her. And that wins the round with that lead. High tempo play, momentum stuffing with the power crush, 
and balanced poking and movement. This is what Tekken 8 seems to be asking us to do. Power Crush is so powerful in this game because if you absorb hits, it gains increased safety and does more chip damage. So, her affinity for using the Power Crush as a defensive option and an offensive option is really well built for Tekken 8 and built for Elisa. They really leaned into her Elisa's strengths that Cuddlecore was already known for doing. There's the full crouch mix again. Running up. And look at this. No, you don't need plus frames to employ your mix-up. This is a common misconception. A lot of Tekken players will say, I need my plus frames so I can do my mix-up. Look at what Cuddle does here. So after this block punish, she's threatening offense off this forward dash. She threatens offense off of... Sorry, I repeated myself twice. She threatens offense off this forward dash, and Lee blocks. Because Lee is hesitating, she decides to go into full crouch and go for this mid, which he ducks. Now, remember how Lee was playing back four the whole last round? This time, because Cuddle has evaded it so many times, she has this advantage in neutral where Lee doesn't want to whiff. That's what gives her the freedom to go for just walking up, crouching, and then attacking. She has shown that she will beat you for swinging immediately. Super Kuma goes for a straightforward forward three, probably recognizing that he can't stay too passive, and then he goes for a nice counter hit attempt of his own. Punish from Elisa, but Lee disrespects with 2-2-3. Two, two, 10 frame counter hit with the wall there, it becomes a counter hit launcher, but he drops the combo and gets thrown. Oh, playing the stances, and there's another heat smash, but Super Kuma has no heat. Cuddle recognizing that, uses the heat burst to stop the mix up, and now she's empowered. Nice magic fours from Lee. And she has such a huge advantage. Look at how much health, look how much gray health she regenerates from this running 3-4 in heat state. Look at her health right now. She's basically back to full and has chipped Lee down. This chip damage in rage really, really matters. And because Cuddlecore is willing to attack and scrap, she's going to gain back a lot of the gray health that is being, well, chipped away. And once again, this power crush coming in clutch. Just a back forward two after the throw break, actually trading with what Lee did. And this this situation is so nice to do it in, right? So Lee tried to do a, while, a down forward four, should be a high coverage mid, doesn't lose too much, would catch some movement, but dies to the power crush trade and he gets wall splatted. One round up, these are first to threes. A nice amount of gameplay sample size here. And now Cuddle is paying respect again to Lee's moveset. Remember that Super Kuma hit that forward forward three that started the whole heat engage in the last game. So now she's just dashing and blocking and chilling. Ducks a little bit and then blocks. The forward forward three doesn't hit her. Magic four doesn't hit her. She chilled out. Now it seems like she's not going to force any offense or play out of frame. She already got that power crush before. It makes sense to not get predictable. Now she can do the power crush. She convinced Super Kuma that she was going to do nothing. And then she mashes out of frame. Goes for the mix up. Another incredible case of string awareness here. Look at how fast that fuzzy duck was. You see that? I'm sorry, I paused. You, you know when people have smartphone videos and they do the slow-mo mode? That I just ruined it for you, I'm sorry. Really, really absorb how fast she did this. This was so cool. Eats the hit, power crushes. Boom. That was so fast. So much awareness. Wall combo. Nice clean wall splat, an advantage of keeping your same character is you understand wall spacing a lot easier. And this is a cool little situation here. Super Kuma just got ducked, right? So he does... Oh wait, never mind, this is a different situation. I lied, pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> Ugly wall situation, homing move from Super Kuma. She ducks the Hitman moves again. Lee should still have a Hitman mid-launcher here, but she's betting that Super Kuma isn't going to use it because it's unsafe. So she's just ducking in his face. He can gauge her blocked, no punish here. Nice whiff punish again, showing her preparedness. Look at this. Lee's 3 4 or 4 3 3. Single back dash, whiff punish. Wall splats, and that should kill. She's playing so solid. She's chilling out and then throwing the power crushes when he least expects it and creating a very difficult player to try to hit. <laughs> She's creating a very difficult player. She's playing in a way that is very difficult to predict and hit. That is a new move. I've never seen that. She took her head off and did a heat engager. Super Kuma lands the heat engager this time. Heat smash is blocked. Nice adaptation. He tries to slide again. She doesn't go for the punish. She sees that the situation is a little awkward, right? Lee slides, and we don't know what axis he's on. If he's back turned, he might be able to hit down back and create a huge amount of space and whiff. So Cuddle chills out, just runs up, and plays a full crouch mix-up. Goes low. Mid poke. And now she heat bursts. 
challenging with the one two super akuma does this was incredible i didn't know that the stage had this gimmick he gets a mini combo we think it's over like it's not gonna kill but if you spike into the ground the asteroid explodes giving more combo opportunities okay they're not showing the game so i can't see what they're doing okay all right so right down for two cuddles in the quick poke mode again right quick pokes quick pokes and then she does this slower down three which she's created a fast tempo game right so poke 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 then she does this down three which would jump over a quick low and counter hit a delayed poke a lot of nice coverage in her default way of attacking and now she's chilling out again notice how she eats this low and just chills out she doesn't force a power crush she doesn't force a retaliation poke she just chills out and there she finds a whiff punish the the calm composure worked out Part of the problem, I think, is Super Kuma keeps trying these 4-3 strings, and it looks like in Tekken 8, you can reliably backdash every option. So Small Whiff Punish here doesn't give a full launch, but she's in Chainsaw Stance. Tip range clipping him. 1-2-4, Small Punish. She tried to Power Crush. He tried to Power Crush, and he caught her with the, he caught her with the running move. Power Crush again attempted. But Super Kuma is now the one chilling, which means she's going to have to employ some more basic offense. If your opponent isn't attacking then the power crush isn't very useful, right? So she uses that to ascertain he's willing to chill, and now she goes in. Mid. Delayed timing low, and then an immediate timing mid. Nice offense, really clean, really hard to deal with, because the full crouch is here. She's been doing a lot of ducking in his face and then nothing, so he might think there's no risk, right? Last of all, he doesn't want to eat a mid and instantly die, so she goes low, which creates one more mix-up opportunity, and then with the frame advantage, she just swings. Doesn't even give him a chance to respond. Immediately, they rematch to the next game. Love that. She tries to clip him with down forward, too. That was a really nice, uh, nice cheeky attempt. Very low risk, and unless Lee is ready to whiff punish, uh, not a lot of risk. Power crush attempt again. <gasps> Super Kuma really nailed it here. So she tries to power crush. He whiffs. And then, actually, I don't know if that was in purpose or if, uh, as a consequence of him trying to cancel the Hitman stance, but he ducks the low and gets a small punish. Nice. Recognizing that Cuddle likes to power crush a lot when he has plus frames, so he just chills out and then punishes the power crush. A lot of juggling of whether to press your offense or relax a second, expect them to retaliate, and then continue your offense. That seems to be the Tekken 8 game flow, and both of these players are demonstrating it really well. Incredible situation for Lee. This is something, this is the reason why I think Lee staying standing in slide is not a nerf. Lee, I mean, sorry, the opponent staying standing. Lee doesn't knock you down. True. But Lee is a counter hit character, and his while standing 3 3 is 10 frames. So, unless this slide is minus, he can just do this while standing 3 3, which goes into his infinite kicks, where he has a mix up between mid and low. This is a really nasty situation for the defender because not only did you just eat a slide, you're now, you now have to deal with an immediate mix up, right? He's in crouch, so he can slide again. He could do a quick low poke with Silvertail, or you can do this while standing 3 3 to stop you from challenging him. So I think Lee going into slide and not knocking you down is actually fine. And I think I'm Your Father has said something similar. Someone may have lied to me when they said that, though. Nice whiff punish from Super Akuma. Baseball slide going under. Sidewalking the quick get up. And that is a cool new extension from Lee. Forward 3 3 3 3 3 4. He does a jumping kick now. That's actually really sick. Back 4. Running 3 4. Nice. Continuing his offense with his own power crush out of the heat burst. Last time, Cuddle mashed here, right? So, after this throw, she did a power crush. Super Kuma jabs to try and counter that potential power crush. Nice duck, gets the heat smash, doesn't kill. Cuddle core mashes out of the de out of the um, the mix-up situation on him running up. Floating the baseball slide. Down three. Down four, three. Oh, that was a really good, that was a really good block. So here she does this. Does a down forward three to catch Super Akuma? Look, flash ducking in case she slides again, or if he did a sidestep duck to beat her pokes. Stands up after the spring kick. Incredible whiff punish, and that move was really, really sick. I've never seen that. Look at this. Push back on the wild standing four. Cuddle is ready for a retaliation poke and instantly rips the I guess that's two one plus two or two one. But the slide catches her in the neutral. Super Kuma not afraid to use the slides, and I think that's a good thing. I think until your opponent is punishing slide, just rip it. Like she, he punished her, she punished his slide like once or twice. 
That knocks down now. Hitman 1 plus 2 knocks down. Running 3-4. Now Cuddle's going in. Wow. She, I thought she was going in, and clearly so did Super Akuma. She moves in, does a full crouch as if she's going to attack, and then just backdashes. And Super Akuma, uh, Super Akuma whiffs the 2. So her running 2 counter hits his string. Full crouch 3. Another incredibly aware duck. Spikes him into the ground for a combo. Let's look at that duck again. I got to see it. I got to see it again. Good defense is so high. While standing 1-4. She goes under. Spikes him into the ground for the asteroid stage gimmick. Yeah, I don't think she was ready for it. That's a brand new mechanic. Power crush again in the form of heat burst. She power she heat burst him right back. Nice. And then disrespecting his offense, he only needs one hit. If in one more hit he dies. So she disrespects his down jab here with the back one. And then on hit, or she does a while standing four. Frame disadvantage, but she immediately power crushes and catches him coming in. Understanding that he probably wants to start a comeback, so she decides to try and kill him there. Can't see what, how the round started, but looks like she's sliding, doing a full crouch mix again. Punishes the Mercury Drive. That's a move name, I know. <laughs> and Super Kuma's sliding again. Good choice. 4 4 3 this time to mix up the slide. Running 3 4. That is her heat burst and or heat smash, and oh my god, look at the damage. It jumps. Running 3-4, running 3-4. He responds with his own heat smash. He has some gray health to recover, but the power crush kills him again. She insists on the power crush. And that's part of the uh, effectiveness. Is you would think after a few power crushes, she might just stop doing it. And sometimes she does. But in this case, if it will kill, she is doing it. And Super Kuma, unfortunately, is not making the necessary adjustments. But then again, it's hard to chill out when you're one hit from death, right? So on the flip side... If you just do nothing, she can start her offense again. So what do you really do? You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. And that's what the that's the mind game the power crush creates. Oh, she tried to duck this string. This string has a high extension, so she fell, so she flash ducks. And this mid is actually unsafe unsafe. So she tried to get a high reward. Unfortunately, she ducked, but she got put into rage. So this hop kick goes crazy. Combo extension available. You gender, and now the life bars are basically even. Super Kuma can recover some health, but now Elise is in heat. Tries the heat smash. Now she's sliding. <gasps> he rage arted, but she relaxed. Impossible. It, virtually impossible to tell whether she wants to attack or not. In this whole, the story of this whole set was, is she going to power crush me? Is she going to keep poking me? Or is she going to just block? And that's the difficulty of fighting Cuddlecore and fighting Elisa is her movement is so good that retaliating isn't doesn't always feel safe so you have to run in and if you run in she can power crush you she can counter hit you she has so many good options and cuddle core demonstrated them all here very very well including the patience on this final rage art 3-0 very incredible and now before you get in the comments and try to downplay super akuma Super Akuma is one of the nicest players i know okay so even though he doesn't have akuma he's coming back to his tekken mains from tekken tag 2 this is brand new territory. A lot of players are not ready for it, but I have full confidence that Super Akuma will do well in Tekken 8. You can come back to this video. You come back from the future, and I'm wrong. You can tell me then. But it's too early to tell. Yes, Akuma is very strong, but Super Akuma, and uh, in general, being in the Tekken World Tour Finals requires competitive composure. So whether or not he has that character, he clearly has built up this skill over time of showing up to international events, managing his energy, winning through pools, surviving the top players, beating the top players. And that level of consistent performance is character agnostic. It doesn't matter what character you play. Maintaining that energy is one of the hardest things I've experienced as coming into a new, a new player into the competitive scene. So Super Akuma is going to be fine, but clearly Cuddlecore absolutely dominated this set. And this has gotten me so excited for Tekken 8. Can't wait to get my hands on it. Hope you guys are excited as well. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment if you think I missed something or you got some more questions. If you don't have anything to say, leave an emoji. That helps me out a ton. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.